it's a name to remember. Please, only you can prevent forest fires. This message brought to you by the State Forest Service, this station, and the Advertising Council. Oh, that was a good uh, public service announcement there. I like that one. And, of course, that's, uh, there's a good message there because a lot of us like to get outdoors in the fall. I love to get out in the woods in the fall. It's, uh, you know, one of those times of year uh, just have to get out there. A lot of people go out hunting and stuff this time of year, and you really have to be careful because uh, even though it's cold, it can be pretty dry out there and, you know, get some fires going and uh, they get out of control. Did you ever see an out-of-control forest? I did once. No. <laughs> yeah, I did once. It is it's a it is a scary it is a scary thing. Uh, people got there, you know, they uh, you know, the forest guys and and put it out, but uh it was uh it was kind of scary. I just kind of was hiking through the woods and I just kind of walked in and all of a sudden I realized there's fires all around me, you know. It's it's kind of weird. Actually the the what was it? The field in between two sets of tracks by Ridgeway Avenue was all on fire one time. And, my friend Rich saw it and told me about it, but I never it, I it didn't is, see it. <laughs> it, is, it is frightening, you know, it really is. I couldn't you imagine. See, you say, oh, my God, you know, when the smoke starts <clears throat> pouring out all around. Did I ever tell you the time I almost burned down at one of the national parks out west? <laughs> oh, no, Ron, tell us. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if my mother and father are still listening here. <laughs> but, oh, that was, I, I did something totally stupid. I, I was camping and uh, got into the campground and all that, and it was pitch black. So what are you doing? It's pitch black. <laughs> Build a fire. <laughs> First mistake. <laughs> mistake number one of, of the... No, you, you light a, you you got to get some light, right? Okay, you you know, you're on together. the right point. <laughs> so I had this Coleman lantern, and I poured in a picnic table type of thing that I was uh, working on. And I was pouring the uh, the fuel in, fuel into it, and of course in the dark. What I didn't realize it was missing the little hole, and I didn't have a, and it was going all over the place. Right, it was going went all over the table, right across. Anyway, a few seconds later, when I went to light the <laughs> yeah, I went to light the lantern. Oh, oh, it was unbelievable! I was never so scared in my life. I mean, it was a serious situation. I didn't know what I was going to do, and the thing just—it just went, you know, a sheet right across the top of the table, and then onto the ground, and then it continued on, and the ground was covered with these pine needles. <laughs> And it was, I had this unbelievable fire going, and I didn't know what to do, you know. And I'm stomping on the thing, and stomping on it, and stomping on it, and it really, it, it took me about, it took me about ten minutes, I think, to get the thing out. I didn't know what to do. My heart was pounding. I didn't know how to get any help. I didn't know if I was well, going to need any help. see, all you had to do was scream out, Smokey Bear. He wasn't there. If he were there, no, he, because you probably said Smokey the yeah. Bear. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you can, you know, you think about that forest fire stuff, but you know, here was just a totally stupid mistake that that I had made, and I'm a fairly intelligent person, but uh, <laughs> you got to be cool out outdoors because uh, we have a lot of beautiful forest in New York State. You know, over fifty percent of the state is forest land, and uh, there's a large amount of that, quite a few million acres <coughs> that are owned by us, the people of the state of New York. And, you know, they're there for our enjoyment, and, I don't know, you nuts them up, and, well, they're gone. You know, you're not going to get any more for a while, that's for sure. So, anyway, back to our show, and uh, we heard... Uh WRUR 88.5 FM, Rochester. The Sonic Insanity Show will be broadcast in its entirety following the latest news from the Associated Press. U.S. officials say privately that France is being nicer to Libya than it should be. But they're stopping short of accusing France of making a deal with Libya for the release of three hostages from captivity by a Palestinian group headed by Abel Nadar. France has publicly thanked Libyan leader Omar Gaddafi for his role. Publicly, President Bush was reluctant to give credit specifically to Gaddafi for hostages' release. At a joint news conference with Canada's Prime Minister, Bush said, and I quote, If indeed a person deserves credit for facilitating the release of people held against their will, I would certainly say, fine. French officials made no comment as the hostages, a French woman, a Belgian man, and their two-year-old child, arrived from Beirut at an airport outside of Paris. The three are spending their first night of freedom in a military hospital after 882 days of captivity. Defense Secretary Cheney is asking the Air Force for an explanation. Cheney wants to know why he wasn't told for months about the F-117A stealth fighter bomber's less-than-perfect performance in Panama. The bomber dropped its bombs far off target during the invasion, but Cheney didn't find out about it until almost four months later. The Pentagon blames the pilot for missing the mark. The crew of the space shuttle Discovery is scheduled to return to its Houston training base tomorrow. 
Crew members were in the cabin of the shuttle Discovery for three hours today before NASA called off the launch. A problem with one of the shuttle's auxiliary power units kept the space plane on the ground, where it will remain for another week or two. A U.S. Canadian commission has issued a very strong warning about toxic pollution in the Great Lakes. The International Joint Commission says there is mounting evidence that toxic pollution in the lakes is endangering human health. The panel, which oversees waterways shared by the U.S. and Canada, is urging both nations to develop plans to keep toxic chemicals out of the lakes. A new study says you can get high blood pressure from stress on the job, and they can cause potentially dangerous physical changes in your heart. The findings are based on a study of 215 men in high-stress jobs in New York City. The study says all the men between 30 and 40 years old had one thing in common, a thickening of the heart's left chamber. Researchers say the change often precedes coronary disease and heart attacks. The study appears in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The Census Bureau says in the last decade the number of men grew faster than the number of women. That hasn't happened since the beginning of this century. The Bureau's report says death rates for men went down more rapidly than for women, extending the male lifespan and increasing their population. Researchers say there's evidence that people can often postpone death so they can be around for important occasions. Two separate studies found sharp drops in death rates among Jewish men before Passover and Chinese women before the Harvest Moon Festival. Researchers say the only possible explanation is a mind-over-body effect. Careful adherence to doctor's orders or enhanced care. Findings about the Chinese are in Wednesday's Journal of the American Medical Association. The other study was published in the British journal Lancet two years ago. Well, rain continues over western and central New York, the northern tier counties of Pennsylvania, the eastern end of Lake Erie, the western half of Lake Ontario, and southern Ontario from Long Point northeast over the Niagara Peninsula, Hamilton, Toronto, and Peterborough. And there's some heavier rain over Niagara Falls, central Livingston County, and from Jamestown East to central Allegheny County, and the area has shown little movement during the past hour. So it's going to be rather difficult to uh, get away from the rain tonight unless you just simply go indoors and listen to Sonic Insanity. And the latest Nielsen ratings, surprisingly, do not have the Simpsons on them. I don't get it. Open your imagination. WRUR 88.5 FM, Rochester. The Sonic Insanity Show will be broadcast in its entirety following the latest news from the Associated Press. Hello, I'm Ronald Pappert, and this is the latest news from our wire service. At long last, there's a verdict in the McMartin Preschool molestation case. Jurors in the two-and-a-half-year-old trial have delivered a verdict under seal on the first of 65 charges to a Los Angeles judge. However, they say they are deadlocked on a second charge. 31-year-old Raymond Bucky and his 63-year-old mother, Peggy McMartin, are charged with conspiracy and child molestation at their family-owned preschool in Manhattan Beach, California. Superior Court Judge William Pounders said today he would begin reading verdicts in the case next week if the jury returned two or more decisions by then. The trial is the longest criminal trial in United States history and has cost Los Angeles County over $15 million. More news from California. The acting mayor of San Francisco says wreckage left after a crane fell 16 stories to the ground looks absolutely incredible. Steel beams look like pickup sticks. Authorities say five people were killed and 21 injured during morning rush hour in the city's financial district when the crane toppled over into a 21-story building across the street and crashed onto the crowded street below. Acting Mayor Angela Eliotto says an investigation is underway. Officials say five people are still missing. After 11 days of non-stop protests, Czechoslovakia's communist premier has promised to work for a coalition government that includes non-communists. At a meeting with opposition leaders, Ladislav Adamez also pledged to try to end the communist constitutionally mandated monopoly on the government. Soviet President Gorbachev will have an unprecedented audience with Pope John Paul II this week. The pun of today suggested establishing permanent ties between the Vatican and the Soviet Union. 
In response, Soviet spokesman Gennady Gerasimov declared Christian values are human values, and they are the same as socialist values. A presidential team headed for Poland is warning against expecting too much too soon. At a news conference, Agriculture Secretary Clayton Yader said he was bringing $20 million in U.S. food aid, but he warned that economic reform will take time. The delegation includes Labor Secretary Elizabeth Dole and Commerce Secretary Robert Mossbacher. The PLO says renowned Palestinian terrorist Abdu Naidel is suffering from a heart ailment and not from terminal cancer, as earlier reports out of Algeria claimed. Abu Nadal, who is on the wanted list in the United States, Europe, Asia, is said to be bedridden in his home in Libya. Senator Christopher Dodd says he's outraged by a White House comment that he says suggests a Connecticut woman is guilty of hiding arms for El Salvador's rebels. In a written statement, Dodd said, under the circumstances, the U.S. government should either publicly insist on its citizens' innocence or keep its official mouth shut. White House spokesman Marlon Fitzwater said yesterday, there are indications Jennifer Casola was involved in the arms cache. The FBI says random drug testing may be bureau policy by early next year. FBI spokesman Mike Corton says agents and support personnel who test positive would either be suspended or fired from their jobs. Doctors say a 21-month-old 21 21 liver transplant recipient is back on smooth course. After internal bleeding forced her back to the operating room, tiny Alyssa Smith was the first in the nation to receive a liver from a live donor, her mother. Doctors say Alyssa is in critical but stable condition. But her father says even with the surgery, she looks great. Well, that's the latest news from the Associated Press. and the. Temp-